found the fascists. Literally genocide to say a group of people shouldn't exist. You mean the same way that Hitler morally mandated the Jews out of existence? Just a, like a, not even the shred of self-awareness. I can't remember which ContraPoints video it was. She had like a voiceover. She had a person do a voiceover in it and, and they're reading from some, the book was by Jan Janice Raymond, her book, The Transsexual Empire. She was one of the early gender criticals, and this quote is uh, an eliminationist statement saying, I have argued that the issue of transsexualism is an ethical issue that has profound political and moral ramifications. Transsexualism itself is a deeply moral question rather than a medical technical answer. I contend that the problem of transsexualism would best be served by morally mandating it out of existence. And now, like, I, that maybe that kind of, like, doesn't make any sense, like, what does that mean exactly and she does elaborate on it in, within the text like obviously that that quotes just one quote from the text but she goes on and is basically like you can't make transsexualism illegal but what you can do is like increase legal requirements for access to care you can reduce the number of available doctors who provide that care you can reduce the number of available clinics who provide that care and Honestly, this is something that's been used through a, with abortion tactics as well. Like, for example, in my state, there aren't very many places that can provide abortions oh, because yeah. at some point someone introduced a law that said any place that's providing certain types of medical procedures must have a hallway that's wide enough to accommodate two stretchers going past each other or something like that. Like some silly requirement about the building. And then a lot of these clinics, like a lot of Planned Parenthood uh, and stuff like that are, are in like smaller commercial buildings that aren't built like a hospital, like that don't have the same structural requirements as a hospital. And then, so you just basically legally close those offices without actually making abortion illegal. You just reduce the total number of places that can provide them. Holy moly, that sounds effective. Yeah, like it, it, that, that's the thing is that it's a very tricky but highly effective method of getting of of accomplishing your goals like just to increase the requirements like this is what gender criticals are advocating for right understanding that gender criticals like they take detransition stories and they go oh well this is proof that this thing sh it should be even harder than it currently is to access it you know what they're essentially advocating for without usually maybe even knowing it outright themselves is a morally like morally mandating it out of existence just trying to make it basically impossible so i happened to see this tweet on the twit saying so last night a few of us were in the voice chat talking and we noted that this person had pretty much no blocks against any gender any, eh, any gender criticals so she posted up this poll asking should gender criticals be morally mandated out of existence and of course, there's like 1,500 votes and it's like almost perfectly 50-50, half and half. That's astounding. So, and then Adult Human B adds, anyone who passed their trans exams will recognize this as a quote from Janice Raymond from her book, The Transsexual Empire. Janice Raymond was one of the earlier GCs and her quote is one of the many times that GCs have made eliminationist, wow, eliminationist statements about us. This morning, we found that the GCs had not only nibbled on the bait, but swallowed it whole and, oh, are they angry? This person says, shame on you. This person says, you mean the same way that Hitler morally mandated the Jews out of existence? Just a, like a, not even the shred of self-awareness. Literally genocide to say a group of people shouldn't exist. Found the fascists. Just it, the, the thing that makes this so delicious and health and funny is like the complete lack of self-awareness that like this is how they talk about trans people. It's like you shouldn't exist. Should facts be morally mandated out of existence? Cope, cope, cope harder. Oh my God, that's so funny. Should facts be morally mandated out of existence? Yes, don't fucking try me. <laughs> like, oh my God, here we go. Oh, wait, I skipped one by accident. Oh, no. I know this is Magdalene Burns, who's passed away now. I don't know what, what the rest of the image is, but... Should you be morally mandated off Twitter? Should you be morally mandated off Twitter? Did they ever realize they were punked? I don't know. 
I don't know. Let's keep let's keep reading. Last night we put some comments on after uh, they had posted. She posted her poll. All of these were obviously the sorts of things that gender critical say about slash two trans people, but the silly giblets still didn't get it. Oh dear, here we go. I have no problem with gender critical people and I wish them well. I just don't think they should be allowed to run for public office or have access to public spaces or have health care or be referred to accurately in conversation or on official documents. I'm very worried about rapid onset gender critical beliefs. True. Becoming a GC is a big life changing decision. Just look at Graham Linehan and as such should be signed off on by at least three mental health practitioners. Honestly, they should use third spaces. If they're invading normal people's spaces, they shouldn't probably be arrested. I love that one. I love that one for sure. Especially because increasingly, gender criticals are harassing trans women in bathrooms. Like they actually are causing like a legally significant problem by harassing like, for example, Eddie Izzard in bathrooms and stuff yeah we need to make sure that kids aren't becoming gender critical at too young of an age it's a big decision it could ruin their life just look at graham linehan oh my god obviously we've all muted that thread but if you want to laugh at them you can hear oh my god i want to see the quote tweets <laughs> let's look at uh, remember this is the final result of the poll it didn't quite go their way completely not getting that this is a joke this is a joke. Hate won't ever win. <laughs> GC's for the win. Oh my god, true, Rochelle, true. <laughs> that would be a no. Watch this account getting more and more triggered as the poll doesn't go their way. <laughs> I mean, here, yeah, check the comments for gender critical is not recognizing a quote from one of the founders of gender critical transphobia. So I don't know if anybody went into the comments and was like, bro, do you realize? I mean, it said like, she said it right up top. Or no, 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 it wasn't in that thread. It was in this other thread that we said, like, this is a quote from Janice Raymond. Does, what do the comments in here look like? They're a safeguarding threat and need to have their own toilets. But I just thought this was funny. Like, the thing is that, like, trans people aren't advocating that gender critical people don't deserve rights, that they don't deserve access to public services or health care. We're not saying that women who've been battered by men deserve to be on the street because their spot in the shelter should be given to some trans woman instead. You know, like we are not presenting this as being like a competition between two between two groups with like vanishingly f little access to few resources or something, you know, like we tend to view things more collaboratively. We are not the ones who say we should do everything we can to make it very difficult for this group to get access to care or whatever. Like the the gender criticals have really started coming out recently. Who was it recently that said straight up that even if a trans person is living fully well adjusted, having transitioned, like that that is still like a problem for the sane world because those people are going to be lifelong patients. Like, okay, aren't women lifelong patients because they constantly require gynecological care? Like, aren't depressed people lifelong patients because they require a medication that supplements their serotonin reuptake? Like, you know, like, every single human being is dependent on the medical system to survive to some extent, whether it's once a month or whether it's once a year. Like, everybody needs access to medical care. But I think it's funny for them to absolutely melt down at the prospect of of turning the rhetoric around. Like, they are so... They readily identify this as fascist rhetoric when it's being used against them. But while they're engaging in it, they're like, yes, this is morally correct. I am the moral high ground right now. Like, I have the knowledge of what to do. <laughs> and, and, like the moral goodness in this situation. You have teeth, that's a lifelong condition. That's the fucking truth. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of my patrons for supporting this work that I do. I appreciate every single one of you, but I want to especially shout out Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Jovian F. Gaudreau, Amanda B., Heather Clarkson, Michelle Winter, R. Halverson, Athiette, Sarah A., Wellington Marcus, Nova, Mr. Atheist, Elizabeth Bartell, Suzanne Maynard, Sojo, 
and bean.